What's going on to my community? Welcome to a guide for Amaterasu. First we'll go over her stats at level 20. She's got 21, uh, 2180 health and a nice damage output of 79 plus 2 plus 100% of physical power. And then she's also got some decent protections as she is a warrior. So her abilities her passive illuminating strike. Um, Amaterasu illuminates enemies. She hits with basic attacks. After three hits on the same target, the enemy gains an aura, exposing their weaknesses and causing them to take more damage from all sources. Any other enemies that come near the afflicted target are weakened as well, um, which increases their damage taken by 10%. So it's important to have maybe a little bit of attack speed on her so she can get that passive to actually um, stack. Um, it doesn't last very long. As you can see, it only lasts for five seconds and you can only max or you can only stack three at a time, which is why I find her most useful in Joust, but I guess you can use her in other places. Um, next is her one, which is Divine Presence. Um, see, she heals herself every second for four seconds and creates a persistent aura that buffs nearby allied gods. Um, it switches between two settings, which is um, movement speed and bonus attack power, which is Benevolence and Valor, respectively. Um, the colors will differ between skins too, as she has a ton of skins. Um, sometimes the okay, chill. Sometimes the settings are a little difficult to figure that out, but you'll just have to try between your skins and figure out how each of them work and how each of them adjust the effects of the ability. So the heals per tick are 15 to 55 plus 5 percent of physical power. So not, you know. A whole lot but definitely more than nothing and then we'll go into the second one which is heavenly reflection which is a nice little line but it's got a bit of a charge up so she charges up for five seconds and while it's charging she takes decreased damage you can activate it again at the end of the five seconds and it will fire the mirror straight ahead dealing damage there's also a certain amount of time um, can be charged by successfully attacking enemies or from taking damage will deal up to double the base damage when fully charged so taking damage dealing damage charges up the mirror um, more and we can make it do more damage um, quite a bit more actually so uh, on its own as a poke with with no damage or anything taken it's 50 to 210 plus 60 percent but at full charge it's 100 to 420 which is quite a bit and the mitigation goes all the way up to 15 percent um, at level 20 or sorry level 5 of the ability itself so you can make her rather tanky and then just pop this ability and she's nigh unkillable so Next we have Glorious Charge, which is a nice little dash. It has a bit of a delay, and I will demonstrate that later. She shines light off her sucker blade, silencing all enemies in front of her. So it's got a one second silence. Um, she then dashes forward, dealing damage, piercing through minions, or stopping at the first god hit. So she does not go through gods, but she, got to, she does go through minions. Which is uh, an issue I've seen, where some people think that a dash will go through minions, or that it will go through gods, or that it will go through this or that, and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, so that's a good thing to have. Next is her ultimate, which you have most likely seen if you're watching this video, Dazzling Offensive. Um, let's see. Three strike combination attack, the second hit will do 20% more base damage and slow, the third hit will do 40% more base damage and stun. She must hit an enemy target with each hit to progress the combo, meaning if you hit one, two on uh, nothing, and then hit your three, you won't get the stun. So you've got to hit your ult. The damage per strike is 95 to 275 plus 50%, which is quite a decent amount of damage considering you can build her with a lot of uh, physical power. The slow lasts for two seconds, the stun is a nice two second stun. Um, as you can see, she's got stuns, slows, she's a silence, damage mitigation, heals, and then uh, protection mitigation. So let's get her into jungle practice. Comprehensive guide of welcome back, Master. My girl. All right. So welcome to jungle practice. First things first, we're gonna max out the abilities. Okay. Um, I think. I think I'll do a little ability demonstration first. So over here we're gonna go to Odin Bots. And let's see, right now we have the Divine Presence. But we can switch that to be the um, 
the valor is valor and benevolence yes so, so when it's in valor it'll be red and when it's in benevolence it'll be white at least for the base skin and the foxy skin and the cerulean sky um probably even the chibi but this will change uh slightly between skins the uh visual effect i don't know if these symbols will change though um they probably won't actually but i don't know that and then let's see we'll stack her passive let's see if i can just get him okay as you can see he's giving off an aura his uh he's actually taking more damage so we'll show you with this guy 66 33 66 73 37 73 so he actually does uh she actually does slightly more damage once she's got that aura so you got to get those first three um those first three attacks down uh especially if you have the uh valor aura you're already going to do more damage and then you can do quite a bit which is why i've seen crit attack speed uh i'm going to do it pretty decently uh next is her two which has a bit of a charging time like this and then once this is over, it'll fire. Um, as the ability description described, you can actually charge it up faster just by hitting people. So that's kind of an important thing to do. Next, we're going to silence this Odin. Boom, he's silenced for a second. We dash to him. So let's charge up our mirror. Three hundred eighty-five um, in comparison to the one eighty or something that I did a second ago on that Odin. So next is the ultimate, um, so we're going to hit, slow, stun, and that's it. That's that's the basic ability setup, and you switch back for healing or whatever after a big long fight. She can, she can, she can go the distance. Let's see, so we're going to go with an auto attack build first, because that's kind of what Amaterasu is. Okay, you need to stop that. Uh, let's see. Spirit robe, and then we'll do mantle of discord. And then, okay, right. I always go over relics, and sometimes I just accidentally skip it. So, I think the main relic I would go for with Ama is, well, the main threat to her is, is hard CC. So, um, Bacchus, I guess would be a good example of a... Yeah, so we'll go with beads, was what I would normally pick. I basically put beads on everyone, unless I'm playing Sylphac or something, in which case I'll go with Meditation or Shell. Um, and then for second relic, I would basically just go with the top two rows. Usually these bottom two rows get neglected. Um, since Amaterasu is a warrior, and she's slightly tanky in some of her builds, you could get Shield of Thorns, Shell, Meditation Cloak to get more healing off of her. Uh, Blink, which is my personal favorite. Um, Heavenly Wings is good for getting your teammates out or in. Um, let's see, Ankh is good for anti-heal if you don't want to build it into your kit. Or uh, your... Um, if you don't want to build it into your build, I guess is what I mean to say. So, Teleport Glyph is more like if you're playing solo lane, I guess. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's entirely up to you and your preference. I specifically, I personally, prefer Blink. And don't forget that once you've got your full build to upgrade your um, relics, I see people forgetting that all the time. So we are going to demonstrate her jungling capabilities really quick because she's actually a very jungle capable warrior. Um, in fact, that was one of the main ways I played her in season five. So she can clear any camp very quickly. Um, she can even solo gold fury with pretty much any build. You just put some items on her and she can do it. So we'll switch back to this for a sec and Okay. Hello Gold Fury. And she just does the damage, that's all. Damn that was loud, okay. So let's demonstrate a little bit of Damage mitigation and damage dealing from her. Sneath, I think, has a decent amount of pen, but we can't see her build, so. Um, we'll switch to Valor. Normally, you would initiate combat with your two active, and as you can see, I'm mitigating a majority of the damage she's doing to me. Okay. So, 
next would be to harass the knee and we'll do it like this. And then... Ah, she backflipped the last swing. You have slain an enemy. It's a smart AI. Okay. Well, um, next build. As this one's a little bit simple. Uh, it's a very safe option for any auto-attacking warrior. So, PSA, I guess. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. So, next build, we're going to start with Transcendence. We're going to go into Warrior Tabby. And then we're going to get Berserkers again. But this time we'll get Crusher, Frostbound Hammer, and we'll accidentally press the F11 button. Frostbound Hammer. And then I'll finish off with Shifter's Shield. Okay. So, this one's a bit more damage oriented. Let's evolve our um, Transcendence really quick. Okay, what's this? Fountain. Right, okay. Alright, so we'll charge this. Beat up on Neat. She was already dead. So this is the build you want to do with more damage. Um, like I said before, um, before combat you're going to want to switch from Benevolence, which is your healing sort of, uh, or sorry, your movement speed, but you're going to have a native healing. Um, but you'll switch to Benevolence for your teammates, so when you're on the move and when you're sort of uh, poking at the enemy, say in Arena or Joust, you're going to want Benevolence active, but as soon as combat begins, you switch to Valor. And then the other thing to do for every fight, if you can manage it, if it's not a cooldown, would be to press 2. Because of the damage mitigation and the damage that it's going to deal while you're hitting them, you don't even have to aim it. As long as you're hitting them with your basic attacks, it's going to hit them. Unless they backflip like she did. So, that's a pretty important thing to note. As far as abilities go. So we're going to go into another build. Um... Let's see, I usually do like three or four meme builds. I'm thinking maybe this time I'll just do two. Um, let's see. So what I would do here is I would start off with Hastened Katana. Ninja Tabby. This is going to be pretty cringy. This will be the first um, meme, so to speak. So can we get... There we are. And then... I mean, I would have gotten Jotuns, actually, as like a native core item. I just skipped it for some reason. Alright. <clears throat> Haters will say it's fake. Okay, and you can actually get more crit on Ama, so we could actually sell um, Rage and get Deathbringer. Um, and instead of this, we could go for something like Malice. Or, actually... Let's sell Malice, we'll get Hydras, and we'll sell Yotans, and we'll get something like Executioner, or you know what, yeah, we'll go with Executioner first. Jeez, okay. As you can see, I have a whole lot less uh, damage mitigation <laughs> with this crit build, um, but it does a lot more damage than, in my opinion, it should. So that right there is your basic combo. That's what you're going to want to do when you initiate combat, is 3, 2, or uh, I guess 2 and 3. So we'll go pop this really quick. And... So press 2, dash in, beat the crap out of her. And during, during the fight, the two would fire, which is the idea. Um, and then for the uh, the ultimate, 
it would be two dash hit 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 get the ore on them and then ult. Of course she's gonna backflip, but you get the idea. Or we can actually call in someone else who can't backflip, so we can demonstrate that better. So we'll do Guan Yu. I feel like he can put up a better fight against me since he's another warrior. He's probably gonna be built slightly more towards the tanky side of things than anything else, but two, three, beat on him a little bit. And he's already dead. Okay. So, um, she's not exactly in the meta. I am just beating up on bots right now, but um, she does do a decent amount of damage, actually, with a crit build. So, we're going to sell this one off. I got hastened because it's it'll keep you moving quickly. So, let's see. This one is going to be very similar to the first build that I showed, but it's a bit more of a hybrid build. So I'm going to go with Warrior Tabby, and again, I like switching out boots for the Elixir, but then you're missing this uh, 40 physical power and 3% movement speed, so there's a small trade-off for the Elixir. Do you want more power? That's why it's good to get it on mages, especially if you're ahead, because you're not really losing anything. Mages are slow. Or let's say you're playing Freya or Soul, and you have a safe escape, you don't need to have boots. Just don't. You can have something else with more physical or more magical power, but we'll get into that when we do another um, another mage. Breastplate of Valor. So this is a really good um, hybrid build. You're going to do some decent damage, but you're also going to take a lot of damage. So we got the aura up, so we're going to ult and finish him off. The most important part to remember about playing Ama. Oh, and this is a little actually a uh, general gameplay tip I can offer you. Is that if you go into your settings here and you go to where is it? User interface, you can actually show your mana usage for your abilities. So if I'm thinking about firing off my 3, it'll actually show me my mana, my mana usage in the bottom bar. So if you follow my mouse right here, if you look down at the mana bar, whenever I press 3 and hold it, it will actually show me how much mana that will cost. And that's actually extremely useful. So, uh, turning that on is, is honestly a good move. And we'll ult him. Now normally with an Amaterasu ult, you're going to want to do it on more than one enemy. But this time I only have the one available. But I can actually demonstrate the area of effect that you can get. And keep in mind um, that hitting the ultimate on one god keeps the combo going. You don't have to hit them all, all at once. What? What does this mean? Okay. Um, so, actually, this is a good example. I can show how far the shield goes. Uh, yeah, it hit all the way up to this guy right here. So... As you can see, once I've hit him three times, he gets an aura. I don't actually know if this Odin is showing it, but you want to pay attention to this when you're attacking someone, is you want them to have this aura, especially if you're going to ult someone. Now, let's see, so we can go like this. One, two, three. These guys are immune to CC. Oh look, the gates of heaven. Okay, so you actually get a pretty big range. You could hit an entire team with it if you... Uh, cast it at the right time so it's just something to uh to note let me just kill Amir because i want to mm -hmm. okay i don't think it actually says anything about cc immunity but i don't think that you can be cc'd while you're in her ultimate ability. Um, I think she glows gold. Yeah. So that means she's CC immune. So you won't actually take any uh, um, CC while you're ulting. Um, it can also be used as an escape. I think. I think. Um, another thing to note actually is something that I forgot to mention is that when you're using her ultimate, the tone changes for where in the combo you are. So one, two, Three. It actually accelerates in tone from low to high 
to indicate what level of the combo I'm actually on. So that's very important to keep keep your ear out and your sort of audio cues because you're going to have audio cues. So just keep keep track of that. All right, and so finally, I have one more meme build. I'm going to sell all this. Wish there was a sell all button. There probably is, and I just don't know how to do it. So let me pull this up. I have it. There it is. Now, in terms of where I would use her and where I would use a build like this, I would stick to um, Arena and Joust. She can solo lane um, in Conquest, but she uh, she's not exactly in the meta, and if you're up in a higher uh, elo, it's not going to really go too well, especially if against a Hercules or someone like that who's just going to bat you around and throw you into tower, so... Um, not exactly a good call to, to do that. Um, so let's just demonstrate this build really quick on the Guan Yu. This one's really simple. It's a nice little four fun build, little movement speed. Alright. 1v2, Guan Yu. Um, so that was pretty much it. I'm I think she can solo fire giant. I don't really know if I need to demonstrate that. I mean, we saw her doing 500, 600 crit, so yeah, she can do it. Um, that said, just make sure you, um, build her a little bit carefully. She's definitely a role specific god, so if you want to build her one way, you have to build her that way. Um, she's hybridable but only to such a point. You can build her attack speed and crit, you can build her full damage, you can build her as a bruiser, uh, like a damage tank, or you can build her as a tank. Um, pretty much everything works on her, you just gotta make sure that you're specializing your builds.